Hello and welcome to a video I'm going to be introducing to you the Redstone Activated Spawners Filter otherwise known as Traslanders Filter so let's give it a little demonstration of the end result in action I want to remotely not remotely but Redstone Activate the is that um, the right way of saying that but yeah I want to Redstone Activate the spawn a chest with some items in it as you can see with the click of a button I get that chest spawning right there so let's have a little run through of how this is done over here I have a sort of little template which we're going to be using now the basic idea is it creates a minecart spawner which spawns once at a certain location which you give it now, if you don't really know the mechanics behind this, then I highly advise you go check out my Ultimate Guide to Spawners series, where we run through all the ins and outs of the nitty-gritty NBT data, and that will ho hopefully allow you to understand it a lot better. So, before we get into making this video too long, I'm just going to say, basically what this does, this little contraption here, is it spits out some lava, and then it sucks it back in really quickly, so it destroys the minecart which was there now you may notice that there's a spawner beneath the minecart and what's that what that is doing is spawning a minecart on top of it and it has a range a spawn range of like one or two blocks so if there isn't a minecart spawner within that range it will spawn another one right on top of it and when we destroy it obviously there's not going to be one in range anymore so it will automatically just spawn a new one so let's have a little run through of how to get this working for yourself. What you're going to want to do is start off by placing whatever you want to spawn right below this little contraption where the spawner is going to be. So let's choose something to spawn. And in fact, I think I'm going to show you guys how to do something a little bit extra. But we'll go over how to do all the extra things when we get to actually going into MC Edit. So first of all, if we place a chest down here, and we put an item in a chest let's put a chest in a chest just for inception's sake um, and we place a sign on top the sign basically is what MC Edit is going to read and what we're going to do is we're going to say ID and this thing that we write after ID is just a sort of placeholder it doesn't mean anything you don't have to actually have to put the item ID or the block ID or whatnot it's just something so that you can put another sign somewhere and they can both sort of read each other. Think of it like the scoreboards. Now, for those of you who are familiar with command blocks, you can create objectives. And these objectives can be dummy objectives, which don't really mean anything. But you can plug the names back into other command blocks and get it to recognize certain obje objectives that you've created. So it's just a custom objective, or in this case, a custom ID. So we're going to call this test um, for simplicity's sake and then we're going to do src now what that stands for is source and then after that I'm going to put ENT and what that stands for is entity so allow me to run through the parameters that I'm going through here because they're all parameters so src just means that this is the source one this is the source spawner which will sort of be the main thing ENT means that it's going to be an entity. So what I've got going on here is, as we see over here, we have the spawner spawning the chest. But I don't want that to happen. Instead of that happening, I want the spawner to spawn the entity inside the chest. Hence, I've got ENT on top. So if we just come over here and we go ID test and then instead of writing src we write dst which stands for destination it allows us to mean that this is the destination for our test id now all we need to do is head over into mc edit and run the filter all right so over in mc edit you want to start by selecting pretty much everything and then going into your filters finding traslander spawner filter and you've got all these default settings and to be honest the default settings are perfect you don't really want to change them they're pretty damn good um, 
the main thing that I want to sort of bring up here is the parameters tab. So as I went through before, um, there are parameters to this, and these are all the parameters. So you've got source, dest, ent, and they're the ones that we used in this example. But as you can see, you've got the DT, which is the despawn timer. You've got the initial delay for the spawner, which, again, you can just change right here. But um, all very useful nonetheless. Velocity values, which are pretty awesome as well. Definitely very useful, actually, velocity values. I had to create some pretty awesome effects with that. Um, and yeah, all you have to do from there is run the filter. And then save. And then let's go back into MC Edit, not MC Edit, Minecraft. Check that it all works so that I don't have to re record the video. Here we go. Is it going to work though? Yep, it works. See, we have a little chest spawning down there. Which is pretty damn awesome. For some reason, it's spawning five, but I'm pretty sure there's a parameter to select how many you want it to spawn anyway. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you download this filter because it's pretty damn awesome and one of the best map making tools out there. So yeah. I'll be using it a lot and it saves me a hell of a lot of time but I'll be showing you how to do it manually anyway because you know it's always good to know these things but anyway all there goes for watching and if you've enjoyed the video a like rate would be much appreciated and if you want updates for adventure map videos um, pvp maps and all my other projects then follow me on twitter and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching